AIM-listed Zinbald Lithium, EPIC code ZNWD, is the 100% owner of the Zinbald Lithium project in Germany and has the potential to become one of, one of Europe's more advanced battery-grade lithium projects. Zinbald has an approved mining license and is located in the heart of Europe's chemical and automotive industries. In line with the EU Critical Minerals Directive that the EU will supply at least 10% of critical minerals for its own annual consumption, Zinvald is formally applying to become designated as a strategic project under the Act. Chief Executive Anton Duplessis joins us today to tell us more. Good morning, Anton. How are you today? Very well, thanks, Alan, and thank you very much for, for having me on. Our pleasure. Our pleasure. So, Anton, we'll look at the recent, op recent operational update shortly. Can you provide viewers with a brief overview of the Zinvald Lithium project? Sure. So uh, Zimbabwe Lithium is um, a lithium project developer. Um, we have a project based in uh, the former East Germany. So uh, physically, it's located about 35 kilometers south of Dresden on the border with the Czech Republic. And the intention is to um, construct um, an underground lithium mine feeding a, an integrated um, lithium production plant to produce battery grade lithium hydroxide. And the current plan is, is for a phase one production of around 16 to 18,000 tons per annum of battery grade lithium hydroxide. Okay, okay. Um, the company has a pretty solid cash position, uh, of course, covered in the last operational update. You've got 9.3 million euros at the bank. If Zinvald is designated as a strategic project by the EU, what sort of opportunities will be available to the company to accelerate the project? So the, the CRMA um, strategic project status um, is really aimed at trying to accelerate the permitting process for projects like ourselves. And basically what the EU is proposing is that um, because things need to move a little bit faster in order for the EU to meet its 10% uh, critical material supply um, target by 2030. And effectively what the CRMA is trying to achieve is to accelerate one of the biggest obstacles to, to hitting that target, which is the permitting timeline uh, in member states. And by being designate, designated as a strategic project, if we're successful with that endeavor, then we will benefit from accelerated permitting per the CRMA, which calls for being able to permit uh, a mine within 27 months and a processing plant within uh, 15 months. Goodness, that's uh, that really does uh, bring things uh, forward, doesn't it? That's uh, very impressive. Um, of course, uh, Zinvar published a uh, an upgraded mineral resource estimate last month and followed up with an operational update a week or so ago, where you talked about phase one production of ninety nine point five percent battery grade lithium hydroxide um, that had been increased by fifty percent to uh, sixteen to eighteen thousand tons per annum. Um, of course, up from the twelve thousand tons per annum. Uh, um, estimate from the 2022 preliminary economic assessment estimate. So on the back of this, you're now working to produce an interim PFS. Can you talk us through this process? Sure. So the, the MRE update that we published, um, we published in two parts, one end of February and, and, and the next update uh, at the beginning of June of, of, of this year showed that what we have is a very significant resource. Um, it's the second biggest resource, uh, hard rock lithium resource in, in the EU and third biggest in Europe. And really relative to what we were showing in our 22 uh, PEA, that has the potential to support a significantly uh, larger production profile. Um, and the PFS is intended for us to, to sort of fully explore that option. Um, what we're aiming at is is a, a sort of a phase production approach. So phase one would be um, 16 to 18,000 tons per annum of battery grade lithium hydroxide, which, as you correctly pointed out, is is a significant increase on what we were showing in the 22 PA. And then as part of the PFS, we'll explore what the options are for a potential phase two to, to further expand that uh, if it proves to be feasible. But certainly what we demonstrated with the updated MRE is that there's plenty of material there to support um, a larger production profile. Excellent. Um, can you tell us uh, more about your partner Metso and the work they're doing with you to develop birds involved? Sure. So uh, Metso are, are one of the largest 
engineering firms focused on on, on mineral processing, um, and they have an increasing sort of presence in in the lithium processing space in terms of being a, a technology provider. And what we're working with them on at the moment is to test their um, alkaline leach process for for lithium recovery. Um, they successfully uh, have on the process of implementing this at, at projects like Kelaba up in Finland, um, which is a spodumene pro- project, slightly different to us. And effectively what we're doing is testing to see whether that process is applicable to our ore. Um, and if that proves to be the case, um, you know, we think that there'd be significant benefits that come from that in terms of uh, cost and uh, sort of environmental benefits, um, you know, it's, it's a more benign process than and some others out there in, in, in the lithium space. So it's great to be working with um, such a large and capable technology provider, and we and we hope that those uh, test work programs continue to be as promising as they have been to date. Okay, okay. Well, Zinveld is, of course, the second largest hard rock lithium project in the EU, and of course, the third largest in Europe. Um, a project of this scale, of course, requires a comprehensive ESG program. Uh, we understand you're working closely with the authorities and communities in the town of Altenburg. Can you tell us more about this program? Sure. I mean, um, taking the, the local communities on with us for a project of this scale is, is obviously key. And um, we have a, uh, a growing team uh, based on the ground uh, in Altenburg and, and, and also in Dresden who, who um, we're very focused on this. We recently had um, an open day for um, for local communities to try and explain the project uh, in a little bit more detail, answer questions um, and the like. And that was that was extremely well attended. But um, we will be intensifying this activity with with ongoing programs to reach out to the community and 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 really sort of try and take them along with us uh, on the journey, listen to to their concerns and 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 react to those. Okay. Okay. Well, of course, the primary focus is Zinvald itself, but um, the company also holds exploration licenses in the surrounding areas. These include Falkenhayn, Altenburg, Berenstein, and Sadisdorf. Um, can you tell us how you plan to develop these, uh, Anton? Sure. So our, our primary focus at the moment is our core Zinvald license, um, and I think we've been Sort of, you know, reasonably clear that that, that 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 is the focus of most of our attention. But we have done work on on the other licenses. So one of them, Zadisdorf, already has a a historic uh, Jork lithium resource on it of, of twenty five million tons, which is which is meaning a, a meaningful resource. Uh, Falkenhayn, we recently uh, ran a, um, uh, a, a, a an exploration drill program that. Um, we're, we're busy sort of working through the, the results and, and the data from, and we'll, uh, when those are ready, we'll, we'll update the market on those. Um, but that showed some, some interesting results. Um, Berenstein and, and Altenburg are, are very important because they surround the, um, the Zinvolt license. So they effectively cover the, the step out areas from, from that license. So, um, the idea is that, you know, this is a, a very prospective, area it was mined historically um for you know quite extensively for for tin tin and tungsten and you know the occurrences of of, of those metals is is correlated with with the presence of of, of of lithium so you know we think that this has the potential to be quite an important um you know lithium province but the the clear focus right now is is on the core of uh, zimbabwe license of course no, that, uh, i understand that um well, look, Anton, before we wrap up, you've, you've already uh, alluded to some of the future plans for the company. Um, for investors, though, can you provide uh, uh, viewers with some of the near-term milestones and value inflection points that you expect to achieve? Well, look, I mean, I think the, the, the key one's going to be um, the PFS. Um, and as we've said, we'll, we'll, we'll put that out um, in, in Q1 of next year. Uh, obviously, we're, we're working as, as hard and as fast on, on getting that done as, as, as quickly as possible. Um, alongside that, we're, we're working with um, the, both the uh, regional authorities in, in Saxony as well as the federal authorities in, in Berlin on, on various um, sort of grant applications uh, and the like. Um, and, uh, you know, we continue to, to work on our, our test work programs and, you know, there'll be results 
of those coming out um, over the coming months and the components the components of our feasibility study. So a range of things uh, across all areas of the business, really. Excellent. Well, Anton, it's been great speaking with you. And of course, we wish you every continued success in progressing Zenvold and completing the PFS. Please do come back and tell us more. But uh, meanwhile, Anton de Plessis, Chief Executive at Zenvold Lithium. Thank you for joining us today. Thanks very much, Alan. It'd be great to be on. Thank you.